introductory video into the data analytics course that we are doing on YouTube during the pandemic. Uh, today's lecture has part of introductory character, how to, uh, how our course will continue under these circumstances. And then we will move to one parameter models in STEM, which will be a continuation of what we've done before on the lectures uh, in uh, that were in the uh, in the classroom. Uh, for those that don't know me, that should me, should know me. My name is Jerzy Balanowski, and I will be your lecturer in this series of videos. Uh, generally, certain organization aspects. Uh, first of all, our course uh, will be presented on YouTube. It will be divided into shorter videos, not fully 90 minute videos, but shorter around 30, 45 minutes. And uh, those like those videos will be available, will be uh, submitted at, at least twice a week, maybe some, maybe more often and so you will be able to process them as time uh, occurs and uh, because there's always need some interaction if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments and in the uh, and directly to me from email or to youpo platform then i will prepare a third video for each week which will be a q a video where i will answer questions that were arrived in all those channels. Uh, depending on whether you want it or not, I will, uh, by the default, assume that the questionnaire is anonymous. So unless you really want to, then you can specify that you want to say that you ask that question. And then I will just ask the question, uh, answer the question as it was an anonymous. So if someone is ashamed of asking questions that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, laboratory work will be assigned through GitHub, but I wanted first uh, to lecture start. Probably we will be will reduce the workload that was planned originally for the pro uh, for the project, but we'll see how how it everything will, will go on through the rest of the semester and how the rest of the semester will look like. Uh, there are a few reading announcements that became relevant very recently. First of all, there is uh, good news on the free front because Bayesian uh, Data Analytics textbook by Andrew Gelman and uh, other authors, uh, uh, John Carlin, Hal Stern, David Benson, Aki Vettari and Donald Rubin is now available for free at the, uh, at the publisher website and not only on the publisher website, it is also available at the website of one of the uh, authors, Aki Vettari. He, on GitHub, he gives his entire course from Aalto University in Finland. And in this uh, course, you have a lot of materials that will be additionally useful for uh, for this course, if you want to. Uh, he uh, bases his own lectures on, the, uh, on this book. And this book, as you can see, is now available for non-commercial purposes. Of course, though the presentation will be available on GitHub, so you will be able to uh, use the link directly. You don't have to write it down from the video. Uh, either way, uh, the materials are here. They are very use useful materials. There are additional comments and questions to the, uh, to the lectures and some demos for the examples given in the book. Book is kind of hard to process, at least initially, but, but has a lot of useful information. Certain aspects might be a bit dated, especially selection of priors, but I will give you access to the uh, material that will be useful for that. Also, another, another useful thing, the, another book, Statistical Rethinking, that I recommended you earlier. Uh, now the second edition has, uh, uh, has arrived. It's been published, It's you can buy it from the CRC uh, website. The book is uh, much improved with respect to the previous version. Now they've added, for example, leave one out cross-validation for Bayesian models. 
uh, also return a lot added entire section of causal modeling which will be will be covering in this uh, course so generally those two books because it's most of the material for uh, for this course and other, uh, and the book the statistical rethinking book has its own website you can find it again either googling it or just by uh, clicking on the link and uh, these and uh, there's there are some examples in also different different languages uh, for example in pymc3 and uh, there's additional information and links to the publisher where you can buy the book either in hardcover or in electronic version which uh, is kind of costly as you can see it's like the, it, it was price in pounds here and uh, however i personally think that this is a, a very good investment in buying the, this book because this is a book that you can learn Bayesian analysis directly from which is very useful especially for your own work for self-learning uh, either way i of course do not enforce you to buy the book however it would be good for you to find it. If you if not, you have to rely on my lectures and materials you can find online. A uh, third thing that uh, was recently published is an introduction to STAN, which is a great uh, info at, at this moment by Michael Betancourt, who publishes his own case studies on the uh, on his website. And uh, those are prefer prepared in uh, mostly in our markdown, however, there is a very good introduction how STAN works, how pro STAN programs are created. Uh, it's a good, useful reading that would be useful for for the, for the work uh, as other uh, lecture notes by Michael uh, Betancourt that you can find on his, his case studies on on his website. Uh, those uh, uh, those materials also will be heavily referenced by me during this course, so it will be good, it's good to. Uh, to familiarize them or yourself with them and that was about reading announcements uh, in the previous episode of uh, our generally in the lecture that was conducted in the classroom which i might record if those videos will be some kind of successful and will be published uh, will be published some sometime later however at the moment uh, they were only for uh, attending uh, attending people and you can find those slides in the uh, in the GitHub repository, along with uh, uh, along with other uh, other uh, other stuff, link to the GitHub repository will be in the comments to the video uh, in the description of the video, and of course, this video will be linked from the GitHub repository. I will also share it on Upal and other other places. Uh, however, during our last lecture, uh, we have introduced main concepts of Bayesian statistics, uh, including uh, prior, posterior, likelihood. However, also we've introduced concepts that we will be referring to today, which were prior predictive distribution and posterior predictive distributions. Those uh, distributions are generally information on how we can simulate what are possible outputs on different levels of our knowledge. Prior predictive distribution allows us to simulate our exp uh, simulate values of measurements before the measurements arrive. So we are basically it's only on our prior information. Which of course can be formalized by uh, by an integration process. However, by marginalizing the joint distribution of measurements and parameters, so by integrating the parameters out. Uh, however, we will show how to do it by simulation. We did it uh, in the last lecture using grid sampling. Now we will use Stan. Uh, then we go to uh, posterior. Uh, predicted distribution, posterior predicted distribution is how we can simulate what kind of data can we observe, knowing what we know already from the observed data. So, for example, we can create model of our data generation process, and using that model, we were we are now able to uh, create uh, to simulate new data that should be consistent with our knowledge. This is very useful information because it allows us to for example, verify if our model is generating data that makes sense in the context of our uh, of our observations that we've studied before. And we have analyzed our first uh, one parameter models either by analytical computation or by grid approximation, and uh, all those both those methods 
are in theory they are nice in practice they are not very useful because uh, unless the case is very specific analytical computation is not feasible and grid approximation uh, is infeasible from the other reason because of numer numerical aspects generally we will cover it later but generally the main problem is that uh, everything hap uh, everything makes uh, happens more difficult in higher dimensions and higher dimensions is three plus so three more or more parameters and we have uh, and we have a lot of problems and really most of real life problems have multiple parameters if we go to machine learning problems we have uh, multiple parameters on very uh, on the levels of thousands or of ten or ten thousands if you look at the deep ne uh, deep neural networks from the right perspective either way uh, the problem with grid approximation is that generally we want to integ integrate uh, the probability distribution and in order to integrate uh, uh, that or in otherwise transform our continuous probability distribution to a set of discrete values, the problem is that our probability distribution has to integrate to one. Continuous probability distribution integrates to one, and the more points we have uh, we have in our, our space, the more dimensions, the less, uh, uh, less each of those points in our parameter space contributes to the entire integral. So cre uh, generally creating the, uh, the grid, we will miss important we might miss the important values altogether but that we'll, we'll cover in the later lecture so generally we've uh, discussed uh, how we can analyze bayesian models and we can go it in a few ways either we can go through grid approximation which we generally uh, I, mean, I said that it's not really uh, feasible and we'll show it later we can use quadratic approximation we which can be useful because we can transform, uh, we can approximate our probability distribution around the mode, so, or the, so, so the maximum value of the probability distribution with a Gaussian in a sense, or approximate the logarithm of the probability distribution with a quadratic form, which after transferring from logarithms to normal values, so by exponentiation, we will get a Gaussian distribution. These uh, Gaussian distributions are very good if our probability distributions are unimodal and regular. So if we have only one mode, only one maximum, and generally we, this, there is some kind of symmetry around uh, the mode. The problem is that this is something that we can imagine in two max three dimensions. In more dimensions, cases start to become more difficult. And because of those multiple dimensions, the geometry of those probability distributions becomes less and less similar to normal distributions and because of that it might have more and more difficult to approximate it by gaussian this of course uh causes an important class of methods because in certain aspects uh, we work with normal distributions or very similar to normal ones and then such approximations uh so other known as laplace approximation because it was invented by pierre simon laplace in uh, his lifetime, the uh, quadratic approximation, Laplace approximation, is useful, especially in certain uh, modified ways. It's, there's a method called in a, uh, nested Laplace approx uh, approximation, uh, which allows you to approximate subsequently more complicated models. It's very useful, for example, for Gaussian processes, which we will also cover sometime later. However, the third way we can do is probabilistic programming. So, in other words, a, a lang uh, using software dedicated to analyze Bayesian models. Because practically, when we consider as probabilistic programming, we are considering only about Bayesian statistics. In case of frequency statistics, uh, either something cannot be done at all or can be done in a simpler, uh, in a simpler way. And from that, we are going to stand. STAN is a statistical modeling language, uh, one of few that are currently available. Um, it offers full Bayesian statistical inference with uh, Monte Carlo, chain Monte Carlo sampling using either uh, no uterine sampling or Hamiltonian Monte Carlo uh, algorithms, or offers approximate Bayesian inference with variational uh, inference, which is at the moment in experimental stage. However, this um, 
also can be attractive method and penalized maximum likelihood estimation with optimization so finding the mode of the distribution generally STAN is a very interesting uh, language which is written in C++ and this C++ uh, uh, language is covered by a certain level of abstraction that you use language of STAN to create your model which generally gives a relatively simple code which is then being uh, changed into the C++ code which is then compiled and called from either Python or R or uh, even command line in order to uh, use uh, to use it pro uh, properly from your uh, realize your, your uh, inference tasks. Generally, we will be today we will be focusing on uh, the um, Monte Carlo methods. However, other methods will probably we will cover in a later day. Uh, Stan is an acronym. Stan was named by Stan, uh, after Stanislav Ulam, uh, one of the creators of Monte Carlo methods, who worked in Los Alamos uh, developing atomic bombs. Stanislav Ulam was a, a Polish mathematician and uh, or physicist, and he was uh, has a great contributions toward the probability theory and applied statistics. And also, he was inventor of a concept of the most amazing space drive ever, called impulse drive. Uh, impulse drive is a, in a most basic idea, a concept of flying through a space by dropping behind you atomic bombs. Those bombs explode and push your spaceship uh, uh, front. This method at the moment is the only one that conceptually allows us to approach the accelerations that will make us close into the fractions of speed of light that are like reasonable fractions of speed of light. So this is the in the concept, the only method that potentially can work, of course, it's uh, amazing by itself by just flying, by throwing atomic bombs behind you. So, uh, Stanislav of Ulam was amazing, his work was recognized, especially in the aspect of creating the, uh, uh, at least in this aspect of creating a Stan language and naming it after him. Uh, Stan, uh, in Stan we create probabilistic models using Stan language, which are converted to this code and we compile it. And uh, of course we can use it in multiple ways. There are multiple packages that we, we can use. In case of uh, Python we have PyStan, which uh, calls uh, uh, models directly from Python in order to perform the compilation process and in order to perform, uh, uh, perform the uh, uh, the simulation was and data handling. However, there's a different option, command standby, uh, which is uh, the command stand is a, is a frame uh, a wrapper for stand that allows you to use it from command lines in uh, either Windows or Linux uh, systems or uni generally Unix systems, where you can uh, put this, uh, where you can call this uh, the system, uh, uh, the, you know, call your models from directly from the command line. So it will be compiled, it will be the, uh, the, uh, the sampling will occur, and then you, your results, your samples will be recorded in a CSV file, which you can handle later. And there is a command stand py wrapper on command stand, which allows you to do it from Python by like, not going through, using uh, mem CSV files as an intermediate of your ha data, handling your data, and, uh, uh, instead of using computer memory as an intermediate of handling your data for uh, from sampling. So it is attractive and it's a bit faster than Python and perhaps later we will all show you how it works. And generally Stan uh, language is relatively simple in this concept that its uh, programs consist of up to seven data blocks, uh, functions which consist of decla function declarations and definitions, data which defines how the data we are providing it behaves. So what kind of variables there are, what are the dimensions. Uh, transform data, or if we want to do something with this data. Parameters, so the parameters of our model, and which we define them, what kind of ranges they uh, take, what kind of types there are, the integers, or the floats, or the... And of course we can do, can do something with those parameters using transform parameters block, uh, which is then useful for uh, for example, creating uh, parameters from uh, we will show it later today. And uh, the main 
meat of this uh, well, uh, of this program is of course the model which specifies what kind of probability distributions or logarithms of those probability distributions are consisting of our in our uh, in our model and uh, after that we can use generated quantities block generated quantities is a block that allows us uh, allows us to perform extra operations so for example we can do something with the parameters that we've obtained from our model we can use them to sample so for example create a uh, posterior predicted distribution or even with uh, with eliminating model we can use it just to create a prior predicted distribution which we will do in a moment and generic quantities generally allows us to create extra statistics or extra samples of something that is not directly part of the model for example our model our focus of our model is to compare the data to the parameters for likelihood function but it can be also used to uh, but generic quantities can be used to create a posterior predicted uh, distribution and uh, continuing that we will come back to the uh, example that we did on during our lecture which was globe tossing uh, generally, we wanted to estimate the water coverage of a planet by random sampling of its surface, like in a Mass Effect, when you come to the in Mass Effect 2 or Mass Effect 3, you come to the orbit of the planet and you drop the probe to check the levels of water. Uh, we didn't use Mass Effect to do it. In the lecture, we used a squishy ball, which was uh, on the surface was painted as a globe uh, with an Earth map. and. Uh, throwing that ball, we were catching it and catching the, uh, and, ca uh, and catcher using his right uh, right thumb uh, checked whether it was on water or not. I cannot demonstrate you the ball because it is quarantined at, at GH at the moment in my office. So one of the losses of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so what we were doing, we were throwing, uh, uh, throwing those balls, we collected some data and we've used the binomial model that related our measurements. So how many points covered water, uh, covering water uh, were in all our, our throws. And this was our, likely, uh, our uh, likelihood of our, our model. So this was, this was our model that we could use for the uh, uh, for this feature. And we will now analyze this model using STAN. And so, so, so at first I wanted to show you what kind of workflow I'm using in order to, or, to, or let's say tool, more tool chain than workflow uh, of uh, Python that I'm using, for, Python and STAN that I'm using for, uh, for, this, uh, for, for this work. So first of all, during recent perturbation with my macOS Catalina, I'm switched fully to Conda uh, in order to analyze the system. I'm not using Anaconda uh, Navigator, I'm using Conda environments. And I created a special environment directly for this course and it's called lectures. So in order to do this, I activate the, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger. Bit bigger font, so maybe it's more visible. Uh, Conda activate lectures. We will be using terminal later, so you can see what's going on in the. Uh, so now we are in lectures, and in this lectures environment, I'm using Jupyter Lab, which is you cannot use it for uh, slides, which I was using uh, during our lectures with Rice environment. So they were just a JavaScript environment for that. And uh, I'm using uh, Jupyter Lab because that allows, for example, simple copying and pasting between, between tabs. I am also using Atom Editor, uh, which is uh, the editor that was developed by GitHub. And uh, uh, Atom is, uh, uh, is an editor you can add folders as a project. You can see your Jupyter notebooks there, but not very well. And you can also see the uh, uh, and also you can you can see the uh, the code and uh, I'm using Atom because Atom is very nice for uh, the purpose of writing codes instead because uh, someone wrote a plugin for Atom that calls the 
uh, syntax of, uh, of star and gives certain code snippets that may, make it a little bit easier but code snippets are so li uh, are limited so no no um, magic can happen either way we have our model uh, which is uh, let's say uh, like we have our model instead we have our uh, our Jupyter, Jupyter notebook that we'll be working in uh, the one thing I wanted to note, uh, note about the uh, about uh, the material, of course, all these things will be available to you uh, in the GitHub repository uh, on the day of lecture, uh, where lecture beca this lecture becomes public. And uh, I am using generally multiple normal packages like uh, Sys package or Pystan, RVs, Matplotlib. Uh, numpy sci-fi which generally I might, might be using on my uh, my not or oh, I see I have, I have here a duplicate of uh, duplicate of import which is not very good thing to do however not very not very terrible uh, anyway and there is a uh, mysterious things called stan utility and what it is stan utility is a, a little fragment of code developed by Michael Betancourt and Sean Tals uh, which is license under BSD uh, the license, which contains few very useful functions for processing Python models, especially uh, computing certain uh, st Monte Carlo statistics and also avoiding recompilation of the uh, uh, recompilation of the model uh, uh, of uh, uh, of the model each time. So it's uh, it uh, hashes the uh, uh, the models using MD5 and saves them in, uh, in in the directory, so you won't have the problem of everything being recompiled at time. Because the main problem in Stan, which is especially visible in Python, compilations takes a long, lot of time. I won't be publishing the uh, precompiled models, so uh, you will have to compile it yourself, and it will take some time. So be prepared for that. It might take around a minute to compile a very simple piece of code. So uh, be prepared for that. Uh, anyway, this uh, study utility also will be available in my GitHub repository. So uh, let's go to the uh, to our uh, our notebook. Of course, importing a package, certain graphics settings for good visibility. And what we are doing, we are will try to predict our from our data our uh, our, mo uh, our model. So our model, as we've said before, is the uh, is the unlikelihood of binomial distribution as shown on the slide. So we have our binomial likelihood. And uh, this binomial likelihood we can see and go decide. Let's start with prior predicted distribution. This is generally a good way to start when analyzing all of the uh, Bayesian models. Let's see how our prior information relates to what we know about our system. Is our model that we are constructing, so we are like doing even the first checks of our code, is our model consistent with what makes sense? Is, for example, sampling of model will result only in zeros and ones, or probability of the uh, model uh, of, uh, of water coverage will be between zero and one. So. Because this is what we are interested in. Theta is how much water is on the surface. One, it will be all water. Zero, no water. So generally, as something media. And we start with a non-informative -uni uh, uniform prior. So we assume that any value between zero and one is equally likely. So we will be using uniform uh, probability for our, uh, for our model. So. Uh, how do we do that? We will do that. Uh, we start with this prior, uh, prior predictive distri distribution, and we use uh, we write it in Stan. It's written here in, in the Atom, or we can just see it in the uh, Jupyter. We can also do a compilation by creating a, a file in Jupyter, write it as uh, as a string, or as a flow of uh, stream of text, text, and then write it to a file and but I think that's a bit much. Uh, I'm just calling here the model so we can see what kind of model we will be compiling. So everything is visible here. And what we start with the most simple aspect: data, so our input information, which will be how many 
tosses of the globe will be executed. So we will be trying how many times tossing the globe we will get right result. And we have our model, which has uniform distribution of theta and binomial, distribu uh, bi uh, and binomial uh, random generator as our data generating model. And what we are doing here, we are doing prior uh, uh, prior predicted distribution, which of course in the formula form looks terrible. However, what we actually are doing, we are sampling theta from its distribution, and then we use this theta in the likelihood model in order to sample y's. So sequentially, we perform that information. Collecting y samples, we get the, uh, and analyzing the mass distribution, we perform the market analyzation by simulation. So generally, we don't have to do this integration, we just sample thetas, and then those thetas are used to sample from the binomial, so how many water coverages will hit. Having this model, we can then use our uh, standard utility function compare model in order to create the, this model. So I'll just run all those uh, all those things all together. So we will have the uh, we will be able to do some uh, to observe how it, it everything works. Of course, first uh, first version always takes a lot of time because of, uh, because of uh, importing packages, and we are on the fresh environment as you've seen before. Uh, however, like. Uh, I will be able to show you how the samplings look like in the uh, terminal window. This is one of the advantages of using this uh, such form of content environment instead of Anaconda Navigator, because when you call your Jupyter from Anaconda Navigator, your console will be hidden. You have no, no access to how the code behaves, at least on, on Unix systems. On Windows, probably it's different. So again, we can check again, is our model the same? Yes, it's the same. Uh, so. Uh, we can now perform the compilation. Fortunately, the compilation, uh, the model is cached, so we don't have to do it again. And we will be performing our first sampling from the Monte Carlo distribution. We have our console here, so we can see what's going on. And what we'll be doing? We'll be doing something uh, non-standard at the moment. With time. We will be using algorithm called fixed parameters, because we will not be trying to estimate the parameters. We will just be using them, uh, we're just using, we're using Stan as a glorified uh, random number generator. So we'll be using only one Markov chain and we will do 1000 iterations. And uh, what is important, what's our data? Data in Stan is being transferred to the, uh, has to be transferred in a consistent form with the data block and has to be submitted through uh, to uh, from Python as a dictionary. So you create a dictionary that calls all the variables as in the block. We'll see it later in more, a more complicated example. And assign them value. You can use either explicitly or you can write it down in using, uh, you can write it down using dict function, which we'll be using, also use, doing later. So during our lecture, we have verified with lecture notes, we did 11, 11 throws, so let's repeat that and we'll just throw, let's, assuming that we don't know about anything about our globe, we're just throwing it thousand times, uh, we we'll perform thousand experiments of throwing the ball 11 times and we just count how, uh, with every, every time the ball was random, so the coverage of water was randomized, so we just checked how many, uh, how it would look. So what we are doing here, we are performing this uh, this simulation, and uh, it was not very complicated. Uh, we've uh, our first iteration and uh, up to thousand iteration was very simple. Something it took a uh, stun very little time. It took is less than one thousand uh, one, uh, than one uh, than two thousands of of seconds. So not so much. All, all the something we didn't do any warm up, which we'll be covering later. Okay, so we have our parameters. We can then do something with them. Our uh, model called with the method sampling 
creates our result of the our result of our uh, our uh, simulation or our fitting process, and this structure this object has to be transferred into some kind of data uh, useful data. And to do that, we can transform it into an other dictionary called params, or we want using the extract method, and you do it by uh, performing uh, following uh, following steps. So uh, we this uh, uh, two we have our two variables from our model. Our model just parameters theta and how many successes. So simulated successes as sim from the binary distribution. So we'll have two parameters and then we just do plotting stuff. We're creating histograms for that again in order to so you can see that we everything is, is okay. We create our uh, two models. I am not plotting values on the axis of those uh, uh, histograms. Why? Because we are in uh, generally we are using normalized histograms, and what is important that in the entire area, the probability distribution should be integrate to one. Depending on the scale, what's happening here, those values might be big or large, and comparing them is irrelevant. Generally, the shape is what we are interested in more than anything. So what we are doing uh, doing here, we are having we are sampling our uh, our distribution from the uh, we are sampling our, our distribution uh, and we get uniform distribution of theta and generally uniform distribution of number of successes depending on the number of successes. If we had more samples, it will be more uh, it will be more more even. All depends on. Uh, also, changing the numbers of bins also change, changes changes stuff uh, because here we have from I think we might have one bin too little, which is possible. Let's see how it will work. Out. No, no, it was okay. Uh, so changing the number of bins also also is relevant. So here we have either from from zero up to eleven successes that can uh, happen here, and again sampling. Uh, it's generally kind of uniform. Our prior was a uniform distribution, so on the zero interval. So generally, we expected that not knowing that sampling multiple uh, balls with different uh, uh, different theta, we will get varying numbers of success, which should be also rather uniform distributed. However, here we have counts of integers. Here we have just values between zero and one. So. Uh, that's our our main idea. Uh, our uh, uh, having that, we can see that our model is generally consistent with what we were expecting. From starting from uh, non uh, non informatic uniform prior, we've sampled every results are generally make sense. So there are no problems with too little or too uh, or too, uh, too many successes. Some there is no problem of systematic skewing, for example, getting too many zeros and ones. For example, if you get too little bins, some strange things might, ha might happen, and changing the number of bins, for example, will result that you will get 11, uh, one bin will be much higher. And it's not a problem issue of being it, uh, of being uh, non-uniform. Or if you get 10 of them, it's even, even funnier because then you have two spikes here. But it happens that because our interval between 0 and 11 is then divided into, for example, 10 bins, and those 10 bins are not necessarily consistent with the uh, no, the uh, getting values 0 and 1, and here you have 10 and 11, so they are like doubled with respect to others. That's why you have to have 12, in this case, 12 of them, because that's many possibilities you have. So in order to analyze uh, results with integers with histograms. You need to be aware how many bins there are, and how many uh, how many things are possible. Because otherwise, there will be unexplainable behavior. So you have to verify how many integers land in each bin. So this is something that you should be aware when doing histograms of integer valued uh, uh, integer valued uh, uh, distributions. So okay. Conclusion is that everything kind of works. We are not uh, doing more uh, detailed analysis. We will go it, uh, to it later. 
and uh, then we go let's say create a model that will allow us to infer the values of theta because before we as well we just checked the prior now we want to tag take, take our model and we want to estimate the we want to estimate our uh, our model from the um, from uh, we want to est est estimate parameters of our model uh, using using stand from our collected data. If you somebody remembers, we had seven successes on the eleven tries. So we create our new model. I think I here did something something nasty, and but maybe we'll see how the compilation uh, compilation works because I've left a comment here which doesn't look pretty. So uh, let's get rid of it and have our model. Our model now is more fleshed, more things happen. First of all, our data block now includes not only number of trials, but also number of successes. So this is our first information here. Because now we will try to get theta, so, so find, find, find a distribution with theta, uh, of theta that's conditional on, uh, on the uh, outputs, in all, or number of successes, in order to get our uh, proper uh, uh, to in order to estimate the, uh, the values of theta. And what we are doing here, what Stan is doing actually, Stan will be creating a joint distribution of theta and number of successes, and this joint distribution will be sampled using Hamilton and Monte Carlo. And again, this is something that we'll cover later. And having that information, we will be able to extract the conditionals on theta or marginalized distributions or do stuff like that. So. Now we have parameters. This parameter theta is something that we want to infer. Mind that, despite that Python does not use semicolons, Stan uses semicolons, so we have to uh, take care about that. So, our parameters now, we have uh, defined a parameter theta, which is bounded from zero and one, uh, from lower from zero, upper from one. And this parameter will be scoped in model. And here, how it works, we will discuss uh, you know, like just two types of specificating models of uh, uh, stuff. This is called a sampling statements. We specified what kind of uh, theta, uh, what kind of distribution theta is sampled from, and then what kind of distribution s, so our number of successes, is sampled from. So we will be having this is our likelihood. So how data is distributed to what distribution? So. Theta is sampled from beta distribution. But how, look at that. In generated quantities before, we used uh, random generators. Here we use the sampling statement of function. You should verify it, how, look at it, how it looks like in stand manual, which is, of course, available on the stand website. So we are sampling theta from beta 1 1 distribution. Beta 1 1 is otherwise no, known as uniform distribution. So this is, we could use uniform here, but like just for consistency, beta distribution is a conjugate prior for minimal distribution. Uh, so it's useful for uh, analytic analysis of the universe. And this is something that we did on the previous lecture. So that's why we were doing consistency. And uh, it was easy because beta distribution in this case is easy because it's interpretable easily as previous results. So how many successes we had before in how many tries. And again, as so our observed measurements will be uh, sampled from the binomial parameterized by n, our other data point, and theta, uh, theta parameter that is distributed uniformly. And already having that model, we don't have to create a separate model. We having this fit, we can also uh, so taking samples from this joint distribution, we can also generate additional uh, additional number of samples uh, using the uh, binomial RNG. So for this set of parameters, what kind of uh, uh, samples we can simulate? So this again will be performed multiple number of times. Will be just something uh, you, during our uh, Monte Carlo computation, we will have our model uh, will we'll be sampling from this model and using those samples we'll already have theta available and was given so we'll be able to simulate what kind of S is similar to root theta. If uh, theta are sampled from the proper regions of probability distribution and that's what 
proper Monte Carlo methods like Stan do, then we have the uh, we will have our distribution and we have samples that are rep uh, representative towards our distribution. And what we are doing here now, we will be uh, compiling our model. And this compilation will take time because I've changed it uh, before. So let's run it. And oh no, uh, fortunately I've changed it in a way that wasn't relevant because we're running the comments. So just uh, we're using the cached mod the model and nothing happens. Okay, so what we are doing now, we are creating our new data structure or again data dictionary for our, uh, for our model. Here we need two variables, s number of success and number of trials. This time we are using the uh, dict function, which is uh, has a slightly different syntax than uh, calling uh, the dictionary directly, but the general result is the same. And we will be performing sampling for our model. Uh, so again, I'm opening the terminal because here something will be happening. So let's run the sampling. So our model that we compiled before is sam sampling, for, uh, performing sampling, this time without these fixed params methods. We are, however, specifying a seed, so it will be replicable what we are uh, observing, and using our uh, data that we defined above. So let's do it. What's going on? We are, by default, creating four Monte Carlo chains of the uh, Monte Carlo, uh, Monte Carlo, individual, independent Monte Carlo chains of our uh, Markov chains of our, our model. Those Markov chains consist of 1000 transitions of warm up and 1000 transitions of actual sampling. The idea is that, for those more automatic control friendly, is that uh, we have uh, this Markov chain that tends toward the, a proper area of probability distribution and wanders in the proper way around. Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which is a default instance, is a way of keeping the situation proper that this um, uh, this Markov chain will wander in through the right areas of probability distribution, and at this mod, uh, and having that, we are able to uh, uh, to get enough samples. However, warm up is used in order to get in the right area of distribution and then the thousand samples is used to just get those samples that will be represented. So what we're having here? Here Stan is giving us information. For each of those iterations our gradient evaluation took around 3.5 times 10 to minus 5 seconds. So thousand transitions using 10 steps per transition would take uh, 0.35 seconds, so less than one second to get 1000 samples from the area. This is an information for us how long it will take. So, uh, and this is to do it for each of those Markov chains individually. As you can see, there is certain variation of how this great evasion uh, is looking because, of course, computer is working in the background here, so you don't see what's going on. It is uh, uh, so all our chains are starting with iteration one of warm up, and you get this information of what's going on. So every two hundred inter uh, two hundred inter iterations, you get additional information of warm up. When you hit fifty percent, so thousand samples are uh, left, left behind, we start sampling. So from sample thousand one to two thousand, the sampling is occurred, and you then get information of how long each of those. Uh, things uh, took time, and as you can see, it was relatively simple. Uh, so our entire process took us less than one second, even looking at that, probably printing at that took more time than the entire computation. Uh, why four Markov chains? First of all, in order to ensure proper mixing that you get enough information, but also because most of pro no, modern computers have four cores, which I didn't use. We will be doing some more advanced computation, I will show you how the process looks like for the status monitor from my system. So you will see that all cores are occupied and then like you see that your computer is really working. But, um, because, but how I am recording here, so things are happening So in the background. So there will be a lot of variation here what's going on. 
Then what we are doing, we've sampled it. So now we can then using standard utility, we can check all diagnostics and get we get some magic information that you don't know what's going on. NF it's a, a number of effective samples per iteration. So uh, this is something we don't know, don't know what's going on. hat is a certain diagnostics function that's used to check if the Markov chains are mixing properly. Uh, none, no of the iterations ended with a divergence. This is something we will cover later. Divergences are a situation when our uh, Markov chain, instead of wandering around the proper place, it's called typical set of the distribution, goes away because of this distribution has very nasty curvature. This is something like stiff differential equations, that differential equations sometimes become unstable and go away. And generally what we're doing instead, we are solving differential equations, certain differential equations that are wandering in the proper way around the body distribution, but this we'll cover later. And uh, we have also now uh, no saturation of maximum three depths of 10, so uh, wandering. And it's also another diagnostic, no part of this. Everything is nice. All those diagnostics we'll discuss later. What we are doing now, we are adding our parameters, we extract them and we will do the, uh, we will get our parameters. What is, I wanted to highlight, specify the seed. You can use any number here, but just use it consistently for a set of experiments that you're doing. So when something weird will happen, you will be able to replicate it. If you don't get those, uh, specify seeds, then you get the results that vary from each situation. If you specify the seed, then generally you will get the same situation. So your samples will be identical. If you have a situation that you drop into the very pathological problem, well, that, that happens. But uh, and, but like generally this will be similar of more complicated issue behind because it's rather not possible that actually one seed will result in very specific behavior because numerical rounding will take care of that. Such situations are too unstable to, to be left that you have. So specify seeds and that. So again, we're doing some visualization and now we have some information. Because using our data of seven seconds per 11, uh, we can now, uh, we can see now, you know, histograms how situation looked. First of all, as we can see, the number of seven successes is relatively consistent with per predictive uh, distribution. So use, having such data, our model says theta has a distribution like this. Its median is around 0 0.62 and its 94% uh, probability uh, uh, density is, maybe I should run those things just to be, just to be honest. I think uh, not, nothing, not much should change because of the seeds, not like just you, so we can see that everything is, is okay. Uh, what we have here? We have here a situation that something from a model, uh, the prior is now uh, covered by likelihood, so getting from our samples, we have a mode around the value of the two, again, similar to median, I maybe sh should have marked it here. <coughs> Either way, uh, we have information of successes, possible successes, and we have the information of uh, so we can get the prob highest probability density in interval of like 94% of probability is located between 0 0.48 and 0 0.86. Why 0 0.94? Because there is no specific number that makes really sense. The in classical literature you will see 95% probability intervals, but they are nothing differing from 94 or 96 or 99 at least conceptually, in the Bayesian context. 95% is a number, and just you don't have to stick to it just to be consistent what kind of probability intervals you are interested in. So, we have our, uh, we have our, prior, uh, our model here, we get the results. And I will show you now how easily we can change that, because we, from what we have did here, we've used non-informative prior distribution. We generally repeated the results from the, uh, from the lecture, but without, we weren't using sample, uh, uh, grid approximation, we sampled from the, uh, from the, uh, directly from the distribution using STAN, so we won't be uh, using such 
we, we can use normal optimized code that we work on that. But we can change our model because why not? And uh, we can change our model uh, in a way that will allow us to change the prior distribution. Maybe we have some more information. Maybe we have information about how the uh, how the distribution looks. I see that I haven't put the right model here, so we'll just do it here. So we can again uh, we can check our uh, change our model by using the changing the probability distribution and. We have the model co uh, called prior normal, which generally changes in a way that uh, we have the uh, we have the model of uh, uh, we are assuming normal distribution of theta. Now theta is distributed with normal distribution with mean of 0.5 and uh, uh, sigma or well, the standard deviation of 0.15. And what's happening here? Because this is, looks, looks weird. In order to sample a parameter that is bounded from normal distribution, we will have to do certain tricks. And in this case, we will have to guarantee that even our, if our model, which guarantees that 99%, so three sigma of it, is between 0 0.05 and 0, uh, 0 0.5, at 95, because that's how normal distribution works, we have a risk of getting a tailed value from one of the other boundary outside of 0, 1 distribution. So, in order of that, we have to guarantee that our model... Okay, so what we are doing here, we just put the bounds of that every, that our value will be bounded from, up from 1 and uh, bounded... Uh, and result will be taken absolute value, so uh, we will not get in the values from under zero. So generally, we introduce certain very limited numerical uh, changes in the simulation, but we don't care about it too much, and that would not be a problem in the simulation. So this, for prior predictive distribution, we just have to do like, do like this. If our model needs a positive parameter or bounded parameter, we need to ensure that it will be bounded. And for that, we're using function minimum, so we will take minimal value either one or value from the distribution, and uh, we take the uh, absolute value from that. So, from zero, values below zero are not not coming. So, uh, having that, uh, we have uh, we are able to compile our model. Again, model is cached, so it's not a problem. We're doing the same situation as before. So, having this model, we are sampling from it with a seed with. Uh, one chain with fixed parameter algorithm. So generally we're doing exactly the same situation, but the model is now is different. So the model has different prior distribution for theta. And something happened. Again, it was very simple uh, because it, was, uh, it wasn't inference, but was much simpler than the distribution, just a no, no, no random number generation. And we can plot the distribution. Again, here, we are plotting prior predictive distribution. So how our model behaves with respect to our prior knowledge. And our prior knowledge tells us that our parameter theta it should be distributed normally. And looking like that, it is. Because prior is consistent with what we sampled from our prior predictive distribution. And because of that, our number of successes also should be approximately normal, at least we expect that most of the successes will be around the uh, the half of uh, the probability because that's that's how we specified our prior. Our prior says around 50-50 of water and not water on our globe with accepted standard deviation of 0.15, uh, of 15%. So this is something that's generally reasonably, 99% covers most of the uh, everything except totally uh, dry planets and totally water covered planets. So everything is is okay. So uh, model is consistent. Everything looks nice. Again, remember the number of bins in the histogram for integer values has to be twelve. Otherwise, some artifacts may happen. And what we're doing then? We are switching our model. And our model is again the changes in only here. We've changed the prior distribution for theta. 
averaging is so like the same parameter has the same value. Here we don't have to specify anything about uh, about this normal distribution because nothing will really is uh, really is happening. In certain cases, when introducing cutoffs, you have to slightly modify your likelihood, but this is not the case. This is the in cases when those cutoffs are dependent on other parameters, so in more complicated situation, which we'll maybe show later in some different lecture. And finally, uh, we have our model uh, with the uh, uh, the same situation like we've before, binomial distribution. So successes are sampled from the uh, or should be corresponding to the binomial distribution with parameter theta. And again, we generating get it to quantities. So everything looks nice. We can compile this model, which is cached, so no, pro no problem. We call it along with all the diagnostics. Everything is nice. Uh, the sampling also occurs very efficiently without any problems. Uh, as you can see, one uh, chain started much later, probably because of something happening in the background of my computer. And we can see how the, uh, those parameters look like with our similar histograms as before. Here we see the effect of that our data is not really consistent with our prior because our prior at least doesn't uh, enforce the prior as previously. Our prior says theta was in the middle with certain var possible variation. However, our data says no, no, theta should be somewhere else. And uh, because the data says so. Our experiments, uh, we have seven successes, not six, uh, not, not between five and six successes on the 11 trials. So generally we have a nice situation. As you can see, it looks very similar to the, uh, to the pre previous result. We can also check what is, how our, uh, to, the, to the results from the uh, uniform distribution. We can check our, uh, we can check how our, uh, models look like. I think something is probably blocked by the recording. So I just copy. I think that Jupyter Lab doesn't like to be recorded. So let's plot the median of theta. I copy the median of theta. Median is uh, 0 0.62, uh, generally as before, uh, with like changes on the for the place uh, so behind uh, behind the comma and the density interval is here and again it's it's very very similar. So our prior information was not supported by that, but on the other hand, our prior does not did not forbade that. Oh no, no it's not exactly 0.5. No, it's 0.5, probably 0.5, but might be somewhere somewhere else. Like in on 67%, uh, it will be in the interval of between uh, 0 0.35 to uh, 0 0.65, and this is consistent with, with this. So our prior was, uh, we, we've moved away from our prior, followed by likelihood. If our prior was somewhere here and located our here, we would have much more problems. We have inconsistency between prior and the data that is happening here. But this is not, not the case here. Our model, as you can see, very simple model, can be created very simply in STAN. Uh, I haven't opened you the fit in here, but you've seen it before. Four simple blocks, all these results in here. So this is something that we had at the moment for this part of our, our lecture. And uh, We'll see you again at the next one parameter model. We'll uh, focus, uh, which we'll, I think we'll move to the next video because this one is approaching an hour or even more. So we'll see you in the next video.